12 months without burnout. In this video, I'm going to share how burnout can be a problem um, and how I used to deal with it in the past, the main belief that was holding me back and my plan to avoid burnout for 12 months this year. So uh, welcome back to Asperger's From The Inside. Uh, you're here with Paul. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So I have always known that I like to work very intensely. I like to focus on one thing at a time. I have a huge resource of concentration and attention that I can focus on one thing and be extremely productive on one thing at a time. Um, how this tends to play out though, is that most tasks in everyday life can't all be done at the same time. Sometimes we need to consistently do things every day or every week. So when I was working as an engineer, for example, they used to pay me by the hour. I was required to work a certain number of hours. It wasn't, um, it wasn't the kind of thing that I could just get all my work done in the four hours before lunchtime and then go home. No matter how hard I worked, no matter how efficient I was in that short amount of time, I still had to stick around to do my hours. And, and you know, as, as with many jobs, we were also expected to do, you know, extra hours, overtime hours. Sometimes it would be busier than others. There'd be projects, there'd be, um, there'd be deadlines and, and sometimes those hours would really creep up and I didn't have very much time to have a break. So if you've seen some of my uh, videos on Aspie analogies, one of them that I really love is the, the analogy of the Formula One racing car. I can go extremely quickly sometimes. My top speed is off the charts, but if you ask me to do really simple things, really simple everyday things like go around to the shops and buy some milk and come home and I have to drive slowly, there's a speed limit, there are speed bumps, there are stop signs. I am not going to be very efficient under those kind of circumstances because I would like to have the ability to work very hard, very intensely, very focused for a short amount of time and hit that finish line and then have a break. Definitely, definitely the kind of sprinter type working attitude. So how this has worked out in the past is that I haven't had enough time to have a break after I work so intensely. So I end up working really intensely and then having to stay after lunch and do my hours at the end of the day anyway. And what this leads to because I don't have enough time to rest after my in intense activity, I get more and more tired and more and more burnt out essentially. And it, it gets, it gets harder and harder to recover. And it gets to the point where like last year, for example, I would, I would try and take a break over the weekend and I would get to Monday morning and I would already feel like it was the end, like I would feel like a Friday afternoon on a Monday morning. And so that's how I can know that I'm definitely not coping under these conditions. So um, I'll share a quick story um, around this. So I used to work as an engineer for five years uh, and as I've explained, paid by the hour, etc., etc. And I wasn't really coping with that kind of situation. So after five years of that, I ended up having to take a significant break. I, t I literally quit my job. I asked for 12, I asked for 18 months unpaid leave and they said, that's ridiculous. So I, I had to resign and I went traveling for 18 months where I literally had no plan from one day to the next. Um, I visited over 30 countries in Europe. It's actually quite a challenge to try and name 30 countries in Europe for most people. Um, and it was such a huge difference that I just needed literally a year and a half to recover from my five years of trying to work 40 or 50 hours a week every week consistently. Um, so that is how I used to think I worked. I thought burnout was an inevitable part of life 
and I thought that part of working intensely is burning out and having to take a huge break. And that belief has been holding me back significantly, I've realized, because when I work intensely, I need a big break. But if I try to work too hard too often, then it builds up and builds up and then it leads to burnout where I literally can't keep going and have to take, have to drop absolutely everything, which is not very efficient. So the, the biggest change in belief that I have from last year to this year that has led me to come up with a new plan to have 12 months burnout free is that I used to believe that I didn't have enough time, that time was somehow limited and I had to manage my time fairly well. You'll probably hear that advice from lots of people, how to, how to manage your time. And what I realized is I actually have a very large amount of time. I don't need to worry about time. I work so quickly and so efficiently that I, I don't need to worry about time. What I do need to worry about is my energy and my, and my rest, essentially. So time is not a finite resource for me. It might as well be infinite. I've got so much of it. But what I do need to think about more often is managing my energy so that I don't run out and uh, have, to take a, have to take a break where I'm not planning it. So what does this mean? It means that I can allow myself to take a significant break after my intense, efficient, um, focused work. So rather than trying to work eight hours a day, I will focus on working four hours a day and having four hours break. And that will be my, my plan every day. And the difference here is that instead of um, working really intensely until I burn out and then taking a huge amount of time off, what I'm doing is I'm working intensely for a short period, which still suits my natural working style and my natural focus and, and energy and efficiency. And then after a short period of intense work, I will take a, med you know, a medium period of rest to recover from, to completely recover from that. Not just recover just enough to go back to work, which is what I used to do. I would work until my limit and then I would stop. And then when I felt okay again, I would go back to work. And actually, when I felt okay, I was still really tired and I hadn't quite re re um, recouped all of that energy that I was spending. So what does that mean? for this year. What's my plan this year to go 12 months without burnout? Essentially, I'm trying to implement that plan of short periods of work and then a significant rest on a regular basis. So um, I'm so some, some practical things is to try and take a three day weekend every week, which means compressing my work week into four days to leverage my skill and efficiency of working very intensely and give myself a significant time off. I'm breaking my day into two periods. So I'm going to have an intense period in the morning and then have a significant break and then an intense period in the afternoon for a couple of hours and then have a significant break. Because what I found is if I'm constantly working for more than a couple of hours at a time, then after the first few hours, my, my efficiency goes through the floor, but it still costs a lot of energy. So all of a sudden I'm using all of my energy, but I'm not actually leveraging my skill of intense, efficient focus. So last year, I, I tried to implement some of this stuff last year and, and essentially the, the planned breaks that I had there were not enough of them. And unfortunately, most of my time off got canceled due to COVID because we couldn't even leave the house for five or six months of the year. So it meant that I just wasn't recouping the energy. Monday morning, I was already tired. So, um, and then later on in the year, I didn't have a choice. I was so useless that I had to take two weeks off as an emergency burnout time. Um, a couple of weeks before the Autism Explained Summit um, towards the end of last year. And that was a real sacrifice that was incredibly difficult to make at the time. And two weeks was not 
long enough. Two weeks was long enough to feel okay to go back to work, but it was not a complete reset. It was not actually uh, replenishing all of my energy reserves. It was giving me just, just like charging a phone battery from zero to like 15% and then right, we're good to go again. Um, when I let myself burn out, I just don't have enough time in a busy schedule to take all the time off that I need to recover. So, so this year, the biggest difference is that my mental shift from managing time to managing energy. Um, and it means that I think about what are the things that waste energy. Stress wastes energy. Um, transitions from task to task wastes energy. Working when I'm already tired is not very efficient and wastes energy. Doing admin and other things that I find a, a big drain on my executive function you know, if I do too much of that or more than I need to, um, or don't delegate properly or something, that's a, that's a huge waste of energy as well. So essentially, I have a lot of time I can afford, because I work so intensely and so efficiently when I'm on, I can afford to take a lot of downtime. And that's actually a really healthy, at least we're gonna test it out this year, aren't we, with, with my plan. Um, to go 12 months burnout free. Um, and I'm really excited about this plan because it's such a huge shift. I used to think burnout was just an inevitable part of life. And now I have a concrete plan as to how to preemptively avoid it in the future and stop working before I get to my limit. I have the ability to push myself all the way to my limit but that doesn't mean I should use that ability. It's actually more efficient for me to push myself a little bit and then take a break and recoup all that energy and have a, have a regular reset, uh, just like my, my video last week when I was talking about resets. Um, so uh, that's my strategy for um, trying to go this year 12 months burnout free. I'm interested to, to hear if you can relate to that. Like, do you, do you experience burnouts? Do you believe that they're just a natural part of your life? Have you ever tried to, to pre, uh, prevent them? In, uh, and you know, if you have, what's your strategy? How does it work for you? I'd, I'd be really interested if you wanted to leave your answer in the comments. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you found this valuable and I will see you again next week.